welcome to the Lifecast. I'm your host, Deanna Manassian. I can be very rude sometimes. Here Destroyer I have... of ears. Destroyer of ears. Here I have Adam Dasani. Hi. Sydney Smith. I can't wait to start a GoFundMe for hearing aids for Tiffany. You know what? Like, I, I had... Uh, you know how it was my birthday recently? And then I was like, wait, what if someone gave me a hearing aid? I mean, they wouldn't unless you asked. Huh? They wouldn't unless you asked. I mean, no, it was like a joke thing. I was like, oh, uh, one day someone's going to give me that. But what if we just get you, like, a horn? A horn? Yeah, like the old-fashioned horns. Uh, I'd rather have cups. <laughs> and Greg Fernandez. Yo. <laughs> wait, so people with hearing aids, they, can they only use on and over ear headphones? You can't use in ear headphones. I don't think that's on the top of their priority list. <laughs> <laughs> it would be for me. I hate over ear headphones. Wow. I get that. Yeah. yeah. What if, like, in the future they have sound patches and you can, like, just touch something and you can hear the sound inside? Also, it's how could cool. you be so wrong? Over ear headphones are so much better than ear I time. haven't found a comfortable pair ever in my life. You need a bigger pairs you need, okay. to get, you need to get obnoxiously large ones yeah but i really prefer the over the ear ones because like with, with earbuds you do get a very high quality for very cheap yeah yeah but, um just for example listening to the live cast yeah sometimes your ears might get destroyed yeah. i also just yeah. don't like wearing headphones just <laughs> out like if i'm out i don't want to be wearing fucking over your headphones like, oh like, you know, like, don't just, talk to me yeah like, <laughs> yeah like you should but it's just, you know it's, it's too much you know I, no, yeah, that, that, I mean that you i usually have both they have recently uh, taken an injury, but you know, oh, no. I, I, I like you know, the sort of just having the headphones around the neck. Yeah, I have this weird thing where like in ear headphones legitimately fall out of my ears. So when people are like, oh, listen to this, I'm like, okay, let me just hold these in place because they're gonna fall out. But at the same time, I can't do over ear because they just dig the sides of my glasses into my head, yeah. and then what I get a fuck? raging headache. You must, you must have. <laughs> there, there are headphones that do that, but like. And that's definitely more from on the rare side than what I've seen. Like, the headphones that Pat has, I can't wear for more than, like, 15 minutes at a time because those will slowly give me a headache. Oh, you know Monica's headphones? Those are really good. Are those the in-ear ones? Oh, no, no, no. Like, the over-ear ones? Like, I don't the wooden ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she talked about those before. Yeah, it's really comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, um, I haven't played any new games. I, haven't, I don't think I've touched a video game. <laughs> I uh, I've I've been consuming my grind playing one game I like to play one game that I <laughs> kind of like to play and that's Persona Five. Slowly making my way through, so sort of got to the next sort of big story arc thing that happened. I kind of liked it, or I like some aspects of it. Like did dislike some aspects of it. Can't go to too big of specifics yet, but there will be a point where we're all gonna all the people that play Persona are gonna meet up and have sort of one big final just like wow about oh, it. We, where we beat the living shit out of it and or we, embrace it find out find out but um i've also been playing more shadows of lunch i'm sort of getting more into sort of figuring out the sort of um the sort of gameplay loop and one of the things i found very interesting although is probably something a bit controversial is the sort of um so what ends up happening is you have two armies. You have Alm's army and Selica's army, and they sort of fight on two separate points of the map. And one of the interesting things is that the enemy will send troops after you. So, like on the sort of world map, you will see them like start to charge at you. So as you and they they, they move, they move. Uh, both both sides will move simultaneously, and they, they move whenever one of your two armies move. So whenever you're doing something for Alm, an army might be coming for Selica as well. So it makes you sort of have to plan your move. And it is a bit obnoxious at times, but I did, there were a couple of times where I actually strategically had to plan on the world map, which is, it sort of had that sort of like, it's not necessarily meta because it's still in the game, but it's like that sort of outer layer from the combat phase. I was still planning strategically outside of actual just warfare, which in a fucking military strategy game is fucking sick. Yeah. And I and I have like a few moments like that, and that's really fucking cool. That being said, it can get a bit annoying at times. So it really depends on how much frust- like how much frustration you're willing to to put up with. But for me, it totally worked, and I really enjoyed that mechanic. And it's the, and it's also not always active. Like I'm currently in an activist story where they're not sending dudes after you all the time. 
And so now I'm getting the ability to just kind of roam around, do all the side quests and shit like that. So, so far, I really, I really fucking, this is like my, one of my, right now, it's currently like my favorite Fire Emblem game I've played. Bar, the, this, it's not perfect, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Though. Jaws of Lunch has been sitting on my desk for a week and a half. <laughs> I, I just haven't touched it. I, it's still wrapped in the plastic. Yeah. But like, I just, I have to finish Revelations. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll never get to it. Exactly. Yeah, I know that. And I'm like, I'm so close, but now I'm like, man, I kind of don't hate these characters anymore. So, like, I want to do more of their supports. Yeah. And I'm just like, am I going to waste another 15 hours playing this game when I'm actually about an hour away from the end? <laughs> and I think I am. Yeah. So, I I'm definitely going to write something about this, though, because, like, I just hear constant hate about the Fates games, and I'm like, they're bad, I know. But they're not as bad as people say, or at least Revelations isn't. Yeah, maybe Revelations is good. I never got to that part because Conquest was a dumpster fire. Minus the <laughs> gameplay part, though. The gameplay part of Conquest is so much a lot so better. So much better. Like, it, it, it's like the, the, the inverse. The but the story's not good in Red, but it's definitely better than conquest where it's just like the character's motivations just don't make sense like it, it makes sense in birth right it's not good but it, yeah. it, it makes sense and even then there's still like this sort of weird thing where it's like towards the end in Xander, like fucking spoiler alert this game sucks anyways at least dies <laughs> and like and then like xander's like fight anyways and he's just like she did. okay so elise sacrifices herself symbolically to be like to be like um oh brother don't Lean this bloodshed, yada yada. Yeah. And then Xander, instead of like Xander, who's supposed to be a good dude, that's like the entire point of this character is that he's yeah. like a harsh but fair good dude. It's just like pick up your sword. Like his sister, he one, he kills his sister, she jumps in front of his blade. Yeah. He kills her, and then immediately is just like pick up your sword, Corin. Like we have to fight. And he's like, There's no reason to fight. He he a hundred percent disagrees with his father. <laughs> But will die. One, he he killed Elise for his father that he hates. And then he's going to die for his father that he hates. Yep. For literally no reason. Okay. That's, <laughs> no, that's my whole issue with it. It's like... It's Xander. It, it's <laughs> my, just, my, my problem it's with the, the whole Norian game is Xander. family. Because it's like, I know that you are good people. And like yeah. I know you're just following your father's orders. But like he's a bad guy. Yeah. You can definitely tell. I want I, maybe Fates is a good game in Japan, or rather, the story of Fates is a good game in Japanese because like things literally just don't make sense. Because like like Pickle Boy, like P Pickle Boy is a great example. Like in, in the <laughs> prologue, like they sort of talk about how Xander like actively Xander and Leo actively fight against their father. Yeah, they do it subtly though. Yes. Meanwhile. And when you actually, once you choose that side, Xander just becomes evil and then yeah. just actually just does awful things in name of his father. But in the prologue, before you make a choice, so this is neutral, this yeah. isn't like a thing, he actively opposes his father. Mm -hmm. it's, it, no, no, whatever, that's fine. No. That's fine. Fates, I meant, Shadows of Lunchia, <laughs> though, uh, you know, we got two people fighting for what they believe in. They got a whole bunch of cool niggas sitting beside them who fight for the same sort of ideals. Takes it back to basics, very simple, very straightforward story, and it works so much better. I've had so many just like small heartfelt moments with like the childhood friends of like so of Almana and Celica, and just like it's just good. It's, it's good. That's what I'm looking forward to is just like a more straightforward story because, like, one of the things I still can't get over about Fates is just. The fucking ch the kids like in Awakening, it's like they came from the future. They're they're future children that will happen someday. Yeah. And in Fates, it's like okay, we had this baby. No time has passed. We put them in a in the deep realm yeah. where time also passes super fast. It's like mm -hmm. is yeah, nobody she, pregnant in this yeah, game? But she, she she got nine months pregnant like right now. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so, like, between, like, okay, so, like, the funny part is that some chapters are, like, right after the other, so it's, like, we're climbing the mountain. In between us reaching the top <laughs> yep. of the mountain, I have impregnated this girl. We waited nine months at the base of this mountain. Yeah. <laughs> she had the baby. We sent it to the shadow realm. It grew up real fucking fast, and it just showed up. Life like, comes at you fast. Real, real, real fast without parents. Yeah, without yeah. parents. Grew up real, they have like I guess watchers or I don't fucking know. It's like they they have people who like stay there and protect them and like depending on which kid you get, it makes more sense than others. Yeah. Uh, like, 
Yeah, yeah that entire game feels. And that's what happens when you make three fucking games instead of one. Just, it's you gotta cut some corners. Just get one. <laughs> Revelations like, is a much more complete game than the other ones. Yeah. I mean, you made more money. You made triple the amount of money that way, you know? Yeah, that, that's my big thing is like, in order to get like the good game, you have to spend like 80 bucks. Because if you you could get the base game for forty, and then you can get the DLC there, but like most people are like, oh, I want to buy both games and then play the third one. It's like, j- just just make Revelations the game. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I mean, like there are things that happen along the way in Conquest and Birthright, but as soon as you pick your your side, you're facing the other side. Yeah, you don't need a story about that. The bland as fuck characters. Bad storytelling. Yeah, like the entire game is based on the idea of like picking one family over the other, and so they they try really really hard to make you like the family in the first like four chapters. But like the entire game, the entirety of the game story just falls apart if you don't like the family members. Yep. I like literally none of them except Leo. Yeah. I hate all of them. <laughs> like they they didn't succeed a little bit. Basically, yeah. <laughs> and then for some reason Monica likes Takumi. <laughs> but, like, but like other than that, I, I haven't heard anyone who's like really attached to any of these characters. I, I like Takumi in like some of his scenarios because they make they make him an actual character in the sense that like there's kind of this weird thing that happens in Fates where everybody just kind of blindly follows Corin for no reason. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you want to fight Hoshido? So do we. we you want to fight Nora? So do we. And Takumi's like, hold up, I don't know you. Yeah, that definitely is a bit of there. And I also like the idea of having flawed characters or whatever, but he's yeah. too flawed. <laughs> that nigga is so, like, oh my goodness. He just, like, and he, it, maybe, like, like I said, in the Japanese version, it was probably better. It's probably a bit more subtle. But in the American yeah. version, it's like, Corin, who's that? I hate them. Why? Uh, fuck if I know. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> and, and, like it's all he talks about. It'll be like he'll have a random chat with someone. Like Do you smell Norian like corn today. Scum. And just like, okay, that's fine. Norian scum. Let's fuck you. That's all right, let's stop talking about this bad game. It's not well, all bad. It must, must be bad. <laughs> One third of this game is very not bad. I'm really glad I don't like Fire Emblem as a whole. This sounds awful. Fate, Fates is definitely the, the dark horse. Yeah. It's definitely like the lowest the, the, the series is probably not the lowest. It's probably like the NES games are probably trash, like by modern standards. But like in terms of like relativity, it's like way worse than Awakening. It's way worse than Shadows of Bloodshoe. <laughs> so yeah. Have you yeah. done anything? Yeah, this week? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played some games. Um Oh you have a list? I finally ended my journey with Persona. This is actually the first time I've had a list since I started playing Persona. Like it's, it's, it's been, it's been oh, a yeah, real... He's always the list guy. He's like, yeah, I played like three games this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Speak into your mic. Oh, oh sorry. I was uh, I was being too expressive. Um, so I, I played Persona um, on Thursday, and I finished it, and now it's over. Is this good, Tiffany? All right. Um, and Don't very... worry about people moving around too much. I can fix it in editing. Okay. I'm, I'm very happy to have finished Persona 5. Uh, Yo, stop it. <laughs> Did Persona 5 take your soul? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took my heart. I'm really, I am. Just like so the Take happy. Your Heart edition. It's like the so, thing you do. So happy for when Game of the Year rolls around and everyone's like, no, Persona 5 is trash. I'm like, I'm just like, yes! What? Fucking murder it! What, what gave you that idea? You should find out if we like it or not on our podcast. If we're talking no, about I, it. it's the best game. Yeah. Uh, I'd say Say it's like the the, the twelfth the best RPG of all time. <laughs> <laughs> a seventeenth, seventeenth, seventeenth yeah. or nineteenth, seventeenth or nineteenth best JRPG of all time. Yeah. Or no, just R- best RPG oh, of all time. RPG. Yes, I even JRPG. Okay, RPG. So that, yeah, I finished Persona, and um, I'll have more to say about that in the future. Well, it's great. Sorry, I need to I need to talk about this. Uh, the yeah. Game Informer list for just one second. <laughs> yeah. So Game Informer recently made a. Uh, Top 100 RPGs of all time. Mm-hmm. One fuck top 100 list. You literally have enough choices or like enough like really maybe well thought out choices. Obviously, this list is wasn't well thought out, but yeah. you know theoretically you could you have like good enough choices for maybe 25. Yeah. And then the rest of it is padding. It's like oh fuck nigga, I can't even think of seven <laughs> RPGs. And so they go they go through the list. They look up Metacritic scores. Like yeah, I kind of remember that game. Uh, well, yeah, that's a pretty cool plot twist, right? Yeah, 44. Like, how the fuck are you quantifying, like, past, like, top 10, top 15? It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. But, speaking of bullshit, okay, we got, um, 
they had uh, the spoilers. Number one was Skyrim. Now, if you've been great game, game been, of the year, fantastic. The, I want an HD remake again. It was that 2011. Did Todd Howard pay them? <laughs> Probably. No, I mean a lot of people. A lot of people put a lot of time into Skyrim. People equate that into it being a good game. But uh, that's just not how it works. It's a game that takes a lot to do. Yeah. That that where everything is really fucking slow and traversing. And, and it's like I shit on Skyrim because it's a bad game, but it's it's still an enjoyable experience because it provides a sort of um, it provides a fantasy that no other games sort of provide. And so people sort of like take that. It's like oh, that's a cool feeling, but like combat shit. No one gives a fuck about any of the characters in any of the games. You might have like one like random person like per game that you that was kind of quirky and so you kind of like fell in love with their like sort of eccentricities or whatever but like i've also like you don't care about the world or nothing like that i've never met a single obviously you exist out there but i've never met a single like elder scrolls like lore nerd just i've never met that person it's all about the side boob it's all about the it's all about ayla's side boob <laughs> and just like walking around and i'm just like okay so the the greatest RPG of all time. What did it do? It came out, made a fuckload of money, and it fucking ruined the triple gay gaming market because every subsequent game that came after that was an open world game. But what about the mods? Can have Thomas the Tank Engine be the dragons? Fuck, fuck mods. But it's like, <laughs> but like the mods don't change the fact that it is a shit game. Yeah. Like it was this developed is, this... bad. It's like putting yeah. a party hat on a pile of dog poop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, like, it somewhat... became playable. But like, I remember, I got, because... I was really excited. I got the PS3 version. I was just like, oh, it's just, I just like die randomly sometimes, and like, I'm like, oh, that was such a, that was, oh my god, what a horrible version. Yeah, and so it's just, there's so like, like <laughs> Chrono Trigger, Dark Souls, Deus Ex. Like these are all Dark Souls two. No. <laughs> Bloodborne. There's so many Demon like Souls. better game. Like there's, 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 it's not even the best Elder Scrolls game. Like Morrowind, I I put Morrowind and Oblivion over Skyrim, and here here Skyrim is at number one. Just like, <laughs> yeah. like get the fuck out of my face. This is like it's that shit. And I'm not. Yes, I am obviously salty that they gave like Dark Souls 25th place. <laughs> Persona 5 Wait. is better than it. Excuse me? They, they, put, yeah. they put Persona 5 for Dark Souls. It's a better game. I don't know what you're talking about. So here's, like here's what I actually you, think the, happened. You know, the, my favorite part of the list is actually not that Dark Souls 25th. Like, sure, whatever. You can... Whatever. But the fact that the next game on the list is Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. Okay. That means, that means Dark Souls is a little bit better than <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> According to Game Informer. Wait, so Kingdom Hearts 2 is 24 or 26? 26. 26. Dark Souls, like Dark Souls just, just beat it just, 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 just edges out King Hearts 2. Like Dark Souls is like a 7.77 7 and then Kingdom Hearts is like 7.76. 7 no, yeah, there's, there's that <laughs> one quest line in Kingdom Hearts that, you know, it just makes it a little worse than Dark Souls. Just, it's all about Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I don't know it was in Kingdom Hearts 2. It's just like, I, I never heard Please. Chosen Undead sing, so like, I, I just can't... <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So, Game Informer. Uh, I don't know. I have to. I'm, I might look more into it. Maybe there's a reason their list is like really bad. Maybe like two people made it and they they didn't play any of the games. It's just based <laughs> oh yeah. On there's popularity. also like a whole bunch of like not RPGs on there. <laughs> yeah, Destiny's on there. Yeah. <laughs> and there was also like was like a uh, Panzer Dragoon <laughs> was on there. That's, just... that's that's an on rail shooter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's just like okay, well. Okay, that's fine. It's like when you get a really vague, like, assignment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, I did my best. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh... <laughs> it's like, hey, intern, make a top 100 RPGs of all time. Um, I really like Skyrim. That's the only RPG I played. <laughs> it's like, fuck. It's like went, the then he went college to college intern. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's 18. This yeah, is then, his first job. Yeah, then, then, then he just Googled top RPGs of all time. He's like, looking at Metacritic scores and just like, yeah. <laughs> copy and pasta. It's like, well, one of the IGN tags says that Destiny is an RPG, so I don't know. <laughs> I kind of just put it here. God of War, man, that shit has fucking. You you get HP over time. And, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, back to shit I played, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I finally finished Persona. 
That's great. You'll hear more about that in the future. Uh, yeah, I, tr- I want to binge at least a little bit of that game, mm-hmm. uh, maybe like 10 or 20 hours, and then fucking spoil it for me. I don't care. I thought you were going to say minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes? <laughs> 10 minutes of Persona you have 5. 10 minutes to get me Persona. <laughs> um, uh, that might not, I mean, it, This is probably the best Persona game for that. This, this, really? this one actually has a pretty like good opening. Yeah, like okay. this, this game is very top heavy. We're yeah, so if I only play hours, ten minutes, yeah, you might think it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, if you play, if you if you like just like just the first palace and like you, you get like just the aftermath, like you'd be like, wow, I can't wait to see what happens next. And yeah. then it's just like, <laughs> yeah, no. very, yeah. very very top heavy. Okay, to say that. Well, um, it's like those roller coasters that are just like the top and then the drop, and, and, and that's it, done. It it's like, like it's the king to come. Yeah. Of RPGs. <laughs> I never really thought about it, but yeah, yeah, fucking, like, it really takes a huge, like, I love Yusuke and all, but, like, holy shit, what a fucking, how did I not give a shit about, Madarame is, like, sure, he exploited people or whatever, but he's gotta be, like, the least evil guy on there. Yeah. He's just, like, everyone else is doing such awful things, he's like, I stole my student's work, and it's like, yeah, it's bad. But, like, it's like, yeah, but did you see what Kamashita did? <laughs> Kamashita is the fucking scum of the area. Yeah. Oh, man, and the guy after him was fucking pretty bad, too, he fucking, like, He's like forcing kids into selling drugs and shit. Like, and there's just this guy who's just like, I, I stole paint. I yeah, I'm high schoolers. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving these kids shelter and a career, but I stole their art. <laughs> So you know, Amara, you know, maybe isn't that bad of a dude. No, he's definitely a bad dude. But no, like, I think he's rel- pretty good. Relative to the red, and it's just like it's just so it, it's whatever, whatever. It's yeah, first palace is really great. On and Ryuji, you seem like they're gonna they might be really cool characters, and they just don't. Yeah. They just don't. It's not they aren't. No, it's just they don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like the, the, the cool character is there all along. Like, An could have been a cool character. Reach could have been a oh. great character. And, like, they just stay stagnant. They, they, don't, they don't evolve throughout the story. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll play some of it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, yeah, if, I, if I feel real. First depressed. Palace, and then just stop, like, and just speculate on what the rest of the story could have been. That'll probably be better. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I don't want my action. opinion to change. Just quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah other, other things I played. I tried out um, in, in my post Hearthstone career. I've been trying to find a new card game to maybe 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 stick with, and I have I've tried a few over the past few weeks, but none of them have quite stuck. I tried Gwent this weekend, yeah, um, because they had just started their open beta. Yeah. I, I I wanted to do their I've been to do their closed beta for a while. Yeah, because I, I got a code beta. for like a while ago. I don't remember how I got it. I think it might have been PAX or something. I believe so. I yeah. think I sent it to a bunch of people also yeah. when I got into the closed beta, and then I I played once, and then I didn't. Okay, and um. <laughs> Yeah, I've been meaning to try for a while, so I said like, okay, I have free time now, strike one. And I, I, I don't think I really like like it all that much. I don't think there's a card game for me in this world anymore. I think I found my one, and I think I'm done. Um, so, so what? I don't actually remember what was what was your experience with Gwent in Witcher Three? Did you I didn't. Play? I didn't play it. Okay. Because like, yeah, I just didn't. No, yeah, I, I did. I did. I played it twice. I did yeah. the tutorial one, and yeah. there was one where I could save the guy's life by playing Gwent. Yeah. And I was like, I, okay. I guess I, have I, to. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be yeah. that petty. <laughs> just like, nah. Just, fuck you, dude. I don't want to play a card game to save your life. Yeah. I was worried I was gonna lose because I ignored all like the card. Like I didn't buy a single card. Yeah. I never did any of the quests and anything. But now nah, that guy was just shitty as well, and I just bought him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I just wasn't, I didn't really like hate it or like it. It was just yeah. kind of a thing that was there and I never really wanted to spend the time to actually yeah. learn it or try it out. But um, there, there's one thing I think this game does, it's actually pretty cool. So say when you open a pack of cards, you get four cards and you get like, I think you get one for each different faction. I think there's like four or five factions. Yeah. And four. There's four? Yeah. Okay, and I opened a few packs and it seemed like every time it was, I, maybe I was either lucky or I don't know if this is the case, but I got a card for each of the factions in those packs. So it's like you get one of each. And then the fifth card, you get to pick. So it'll, it, like, that's your guaranteed rare. Uh, the other cards can also be rares or epics or legendaries or whatever, but your fifth one is guaranteed a rare, and you get three choices, and you get to pick one of those cards, and that's what you get from the pack. That's so cool. And I, I think that's actually a pretty neat thing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what I was actually doing with those cards because I don't have any basis of what they are because I literally just started playing it 10 minutes before that. Yeah, yeah. and it's so, a very different card. Game. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. It's not like, oh, this thing it seems like it's got good stats and it's yeah. got a good effect. It's like, I can't I can't judge that. Yeah. Because it's not about, it's, 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 very, it's a very, very different card game. And um, I think the art's really pretty. After, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember like when I first saw Hearthstone like, what, 20 years ago when it came out. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I, I was like, this is really pretty. And then every, like all the card games nowadays are like, they're gorgeous. They're like so they, they nice. pull Hearthstone out of the fucking wall. Yeah, like, Hearthstone's got like, you know it's like aesthetic or whatever, but like 
fuck. Yeah, like Shadow Jeez. Verse is another example where it just all looks fucking gorgeous. Such, another one I tried out because they added Street Fighter characters. I'm like, sure, let's try this out. What? Yeah, so some of the classes in Shadow Verse are now Street Fighter characters. And I'm like, yeah, I want to play this fucking card in this card game. So why the hell not? And then I tried out. And they're really like that. Yeah, they're like costumes. Cards, okay. Yeah, they're costumes. And, um,. Yeah, Gwent is not for me. I've played the one card game in this world that is for me, and I've now reached a point in my life where I do not play that card game for me. So it's over. It's card games card are over. Card games are done. Yeah. They're extinct. Yeah. We're shutting it down. They're shutting it down. Please, our We could play real Gwent, Diana. We could. We could bring our, our sets and figure out how to play real Gwent. Yeah, they've added yeah, more cards. Too. They have? Yeah. yeah, see? I don't. Excluding everyone. Well, uh, well, I know I that we four. have both of them. Yeah. I have all four. Oh, sorry, because you got the other yeah. set, too. Yeah, yeah. I still have the download code for the PS4 version. I don't. I sold it. I should I, I literally, I made my money back on that quick set because I sold the download code. Cool. I've been playing more uh, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, which I'm liking more and more as I play. I've been doing more, I tried some more single player stuff last night because I usually play with Arthur a lot. Arthur is very good and he just carries me and I don't really do anything. And because Arthur does very well, we play with better people. So I'm not actually learning anything when I'm playing with him. I'm just kind of staying behind him and having him carry me. Yeah. So I like it's at a point where I'm gonna try to like play a lot more on my own, and I've actually been having a lot more fun because, believe it or not, not everyone's a god at that game. It's only when you get higher ranks there are people just as bad as you when you start playing at a good rank. Higher yeah. ranked players are better at the game. Yeah, believe it or not. Whoa. Yeah. It's just... Different play styles. Yeah, different play styles too. Yeah. I. I it, there was this thing last night and I was playing and it really gave me a sense of what the game was and um, I drove a car to a house, which I, I searched for that house, and then I stayed in that house for a little while. And I watched this dude run up to the car because I was looking out the window and I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I can try to shoot or whatever, but I didn't have like a fucking shotgun. I saw this dude drive up to my car, shoot out all my tires. And then leave. That's so good. <laughs> but then, but then, before he left, some other dude came, and was also, and they just kind of had this like standstill where they looked at each other, and then both of them drove away, and they drove in the wrong direction into the blue zone. <laughs> and, <I died. laughs> and I'm like, wow, that was fucking poetic. That's it was a great moment because I'm looking at the map. I'm like, wait, they just went that way, and I'm going this way. Oh, they're fucking dead. <laughs> So they just shot my tires out and then died. That's nice. <laughs> they died it, doing what they loved. Yeah. <laughs> it was fucking poetic. I saw that off the window. I'm like, oh my god. If I wasn't at this window, I wouldn't have seen that. This is great. I love it. <laughs> Emerging to <play>. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tried some uh, some Horizon earlier today. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I, 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 re I realized it's a horrible thing. And I, I haven't played an open world game since Zelda came out. And now... Zelda set all those expectations, and I'm trying to do things in Horizon where I'm like, oh man, you know, that would have worked in Zelda. I, I would be able to do that in Zelda. That's the worst part about playing really good video games. Is yeah. That they make every other game you play worse. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I've lived that life ever since I played Dark Souls. I became this cynical <laughs> piece of shit. Yeah. Before I was like, Dynasty Warriors, you press square three times, you press triangle to do a cool move. And then the bad guys go away. <laughs> and it's real fun, all right? And like, holy shit, I can't do that anymore. No. So it's like, you, you like, for, like, speaking of Skyrim, so Skyrim ruined AAA games for a long time because they started doing open world games because Skyrim was open world. But the cool thing about Skyrim is the the, the idea of player agency, the fact that you could do whatever you want. That's the literally the only good thing about Skyrim. Yet they missed that part and went for the open world part. No one cares about the fact that Skyrim is big. I mean, people do, obviously. But the best part about Skyrim is the is the player agency. So, and they forgot that part. So we have a whole bunch of open worlds where you really don't make any actual decisions. And so here comes Zelda. The, the designers at Nintendo are pretty much the best in the business. So they were like, oh, hey, we're making an open world game. Let's use the fact that it's open world to its advantage. And then you go back to games like Horizon Zero Dawn, which are very... It's probably... Probably one of the best of its type, mm -hmm. but it's still one of those very much an open world game where yeah. you just, it might as well be a linear game, but you have to walk a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to see that like moving forward a lot. I'm interested to see what like some of the bigger open world games will do, like maybe Far Cry or something like that. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping Zelda is like the new sort of... The new um, precedent? Yeah, if we're going to keep getting open world games, I hope yeah. this is the new standard that's set for it. Yeah. Uh, again, 
where you actually, there's a reason the world is open and it's not just because Skyrim made a lot of money. Yeah. I'd rather just, you know, just go back to linear games in general. But what if we're going to, if we're going to have every game be an open world sandbox, yeah. then uh, hopefully it follows Zelda's standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm all behind that because yeah. there are definitely a few occasions in Horizon where I'm like, oh man, there's this big ass di- robo dinosaur on the other side of this rock. Okay, so what if I could climb up on this rock and jump on its back and kill it or whatever? And I'm like, oh, I can't climb. <laughs> so then I'm like, well, I guess my plan's foiled. Yeah. And I'm like, but if I was playing Zelda, I would be able to do that. Yeah. So so that's like going through my head a lot, and that's just how it's going to be for forever. a while now. Yeah, forever. <laughs> probably it's like forever. yeah, probably forever. It's like oh well, I could have done this in Zelda. <laughs> I'll just move forward. Yeah, just, I just, I guess I'll just go in this linear part of this yeah. open world game for no reason. Yeah, it's like in Pubic, how you can't jump over those very small white fences. Yeah, yeah, sure. You could do that in Zelda. <laughs> that, that's fucking bothersome. It's like here's this tiny ass fence. It's like, oh, oh, oh he, he's getting there, but he's not making it over. <laughs> He's trying so hard. Look at his little legs. Look at his little legs. <laughs> They're moving. <laughs> he's giving it his best. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I've been playing. Okay. I, I will continue to play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, even though... Oh, whoops, I deleted my thing by accident. Even though... <laughs> first impressions aren't great. Yeah, for, it's not the first impressions aren't great. It's just the, the last thing I played was just so exceptional that I have to compare it to it. Because it, it, they're just so similar in nature. That's it. Okay. Uh, that's not to insult Horizon. I'm sure it's a great game on its own merit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of wish you played it first. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd played Horizon so before Zelda it. came out. Yeah. <laughs> So it's going to be interesting because I want to play Horizon, but I didn't play Zelda. Yeah. yeah. And so don't really want to play Zelda. Yeah. And have no means of playing Zelda. So there's that too. <laughs> so I'm playing Horizon. <laughs> well, I have no means of playing Horizon either. Uh, uh, so I'm just you're a playing leech. Overwatch. I'm just a leech for other people's consoles. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. all. I, that's all I did. All right. I didn't. I did nothing. Woo. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, so with that, we're going to go into announcements. Hell yeah. Announce me some important details or minor important details. I will. Cool. Uh, we have Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you said minor That's details. That's probably right. how you got yeah. here. Minor. Uh, yeah, probably how you got here. Um, although I did put the link on Facebook, too. Uh, oh, should we have Facebook? Yeah. Since when? You didn't Since announce that. The, Facebook was the first one we got. You didn't, got announce, that. How you didn't announce that, though. It's not. Okay, we're doing a joke. Yes, I'm about to, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I, 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 I to be one of those like you couldn't like for new people that are joining us this week you couldn't like play along please. <laughs> um, um. So yeah, we got Twitter at the underscore lifecast, facebook.com slash the lifecast. We have Twitch, which is where you're probably watching this, the lifecast net. Uh, we got YouTube. Uh, and I made a short link for that. It's bit.ly slash lifecast yt. Um, and we have our website, thelifecast.net, and we're going to be working on more written content, even though we are doing a lot of video stuff. Um, you can find our full like streaming schedule on uh, Facebook and Twitter. That's going out tomorrow, and it's also our offline image on Twitch. Um, and then YouTube is where you can find archived streams, because Twitch doesn't keep them for more than two weeks. And um, the VOD of the podcast that comes out every Friday. The podcast comes out every t- Thursday. Um, and you can also find our tabletop series that we're working on on YouTube. What is VOD? Vo- video, video on demand. demand. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And now, um, questions. Do we want to talk about E3 at all or no? E3 is next week. We're gonna no, do I mean, we... do you want to talk about, like, announce that we're doing stuff for Oh, yeah, we're doing stuff for E3. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to be having, uh, uh, like, an afternoon long stream. Tuesday, June 13th, and it starts at 3 p.m. Um, we're going to be talking about all the different press conferences and things that went on during it. Yeah. I'm really glad that Greg sent my message to Chris this morning. Yeah, so, <laughs> how do you like it? How do you feel oh. about EA? <laughs> yeah. uh, I really like just it. has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I really like the coverage of just EA being Ricky plus sock puppets. Yeah. <laughs> like, I kind of want to lock that in and I, be like, yeah, yeah. that's it. I might make sock puppets. Yeah, we have to make socks. Let's do that. We could I'll do finger it. puppets. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring, bring if everyone makes a sock puppet of themselves, we, like, absolutely will do I'm it. not that talented. I'll bring in the supplies and we could try to do it I together. mean, like, it could just be, like, felt and hot glue. <laughs> yeah. Um, that doesn't seem no, that hard. No, we gotta do a full sock, though. That's so many puppets to manage. But yeah, that's yeah. our E3 coverage. We, we need, like, 
I think technically too. Yeah. Yeah. And just like maybe we should just put some like sitting at the at the table, you know. <laughs> um, we can go all over this trip. <laughs> Tell me the supplies I need to bring it. I'll do it. A lot of felt. I won't do the work for it, but I'll bring in the supplies. I'll do it. All right, perfect. We got a plan. Um, we got yeah. a plan. Our E three predictions will be in the next week's podcast. Okay. Okay. I'll that seems those. like a good thing, and we'll also be doing social eating during our pre show. Okay. The, that's locked in. It's happening. Locked in. All right. Oh, we decide what we eat on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, oh, God. God. Oh, All God. right. Fisherman's platter for everyone. I can't come to next week's podcast. Uh, yeah, I think he's gonna figure out why everyone's allergic. Yeah. To it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Suggest foods on Twitter. We might not get to all of them or Pineapple any of them. Pizza. Or maybe um, let's make a poll. Yeah. <laughs> We have four like four restaurant yeah, well, choices, and we'll make a poll. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Oh, then it. we don't have to decide what we yeah, want for dinner. Yeah, one of the ball is crispy cream. Crispy quest. Crispy quest. That's gonna be the next podcast. We're gonna go to fucking Krispy Kreme. That's such a okay. long drive. Deanna, how do you feel about driving to Connecticut again? I mean, we were there. <laughs> it's true. We could be back there right now. We could just go. What? We could just go. We right could now. go. Or we could go the New York one. I don't know which one's closer. Connecticut. Yeah. It's like a two hour drive versus a four hour oh, drive. Oh, yeah, that's right, because New York's long. No, Massachusetts is long. No, but New York is also long because there's They're like New York like cities here ways. and then the rest of New York. I mean, we're also like on the right side of Massachusetts. Yeah, like Massachusetts is like this rest. long. Yeah. The distance we'd have to drive in Massachusetts is far greater than the distance we'd have to travel in New York. <laughs> Ooh, geography. I always forget that New York is like gross and Massive? Like wraps around. Yeah. Not that it's big, but like it like wraps around shit. So it's like that it's like this. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. It's like the right triangle of state. <laughs> but like with a little extra thumb at the end. Yeah. yeah. Idaho's the scalene triangle of states. <laughs> Which one is anyway. Scalene? Is that the two? Yeah, it's the two are the same. The yeah. Dragon so, okay. All right. No, those are scaly triangles. Uh, oh. Moving into questions. We did have one in the ask box that I didn't get to last week. Someone oh. said, if you were candy, what would you be? Twizzlers, because I don't want to associate with people who don't like them. Maybe. If you like red vines, go away. Twizzlers, Maybe. Twizzlers are big butt. Okay, so Twizzlers. <laughs> That's fine. I'm butt too. <laughs> Twiz- Twizzlers are very, like, they have this weird sort of, like, expectation. It depends on how smart you are. But for me, Twizzlers are very, like, they seem for some reason seem very appetizing and then you eat them and you're reminded that they are very not appetizing you gotta and, get them like fresh and then, and then you and, and then, not dry and a couple a couple years later you're like wow can't you know would you I'm, rather I'm have red vines scissors. like the, the coconut ass rope i also don't want to have sour it? green apple squares <laughs> Or various other 7-Eleven ghetto candy brands. I can When I get a Twizzler and it's like this long, I only want like half of it and I'm just done. Yeah. But I'm like, I can pass that age of like little kidness where like you can't just hand off half eaten food anymore. Also, what is it really candy if I eat it and I feel like I don't have to go to the hospital afterwards? Let's talk about some healthy ass fucking candy. I, like I could eat like 25 pounds of that shit. I, I love strawberry licorice. Yeah, it's no. probably my top tier candy. You can't even. So. There's like, there's like, there's like a couple grams of sugar in that bitch. Get the fuck out. Of here. Can you use that as a straw? Yeah, you can. Yeah. That's I used all, to, I used to do Twizzlers in Mountain Dew all the time, and I oh, think I might like do diabetes. it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that does make up for the lack of sugar if you use it as a straw. <laughs> <Mountain> <laughs> if I was a candy, I would be. Um, I don't. I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> I don't actually know many candies. <laughs> I have an alternate for myself. I'd be now and later because I bother you at once, and then a few hours later, I'm like, "Hey, did you get my message?" <laughs> oh man. Yeah. All right. I guess I would be. Um... Trying to think of like a metaphorical. Well, I'm trying. I'm getting a little philosophical. I'm like, who am I as a person? What aura do I exude? And what candy perfectly? Exude? I'm really glad I'm candy. not the only one trying to do that because like, I already got mine and mine, and it's like it's kind of cheesy, but it works like that. All right, che- che- cheese me up. Maybe it will inspire me. <laughs> I feel like I'm um, Sour Patch Kids because they're sour and, and then, then they're, they're sweet. Because I'm like I'm an I'm a very distant, bitchy person when you first meet me. But then, like, I warm up to you, and I am a friendly human being who just likes dogs and cute things. I'd be a take five bar. Because, like, I'm, like, 
kind of salty always, but like it's never it's it's never like the main taste. It's always it's always there, but I just don't show it always, you know. It, I'm always like, covered by you know like caramel and your and your and your and your chocolate and stuff, but the salt's always there. I have a third alternative. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I like that you guys are in trouble with this. All right, no, no, I got I got mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah go I'm ahead. Fucking dots. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm fucking the worst. <laughs> I love dots, though. Dots are like one of the best candies. Uh, you, you eat me, and I fucking stick in your mouth for like 45 years. <laughs> so you're clingy? Is that I'm clingy? Yeah. I'm just clingy. What can I say? I'm just, you know, it's like as soon as, soon as you're like, all right, I'll let you in. I'm just like, <laughs> and I'll never let like, go. <laughs> I actually fucking despise dots. I had dots like, are really bad. I had like they're one. So I had one dots like twelve years ago, and they're still God. residue. Like, my, my fucking dentist cleaned it out of my mouth a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, this is really green. You need a green dot. It's like, no. it's like yeah, like twelve years ago, dot. He's still in there. Well, dots. my they're, second they're alternate delicious, was though. what you call it's because I'm crunchy and hard to find. Crunchy. See, yes, we're, lots of us are crunchy. We have bones in us. See, I thought you were gonna say Skittles because you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm those, I'm those airheads. Those, those airheads like extreme. Oh no! <laughs> airheads extreme were like lit when I was twelve, and now oh, that I have taste still buds, I fucking hate them. I feel like Do I, I want not have one taste in the entire package, and then I'm just done. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, when I get started, candy. <laughs> I literally the only candy I enjoy are take five bars. So there. No, yeah, no, nah, I'm definitely not a big candy guy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just, I'm just not in general. I just yeah. like chocolate. I do. I'm, I'm fucking all about strawberry uh, starburst though, the pink ones. Top tier. I, I like the watermelon ones. Oh yeah. But, but the watermelon ones, I have a horrifying story for. Um. So back in high school, when we had lockers and uh, we had oh. a bookstore. They would sell the Sour Patch Kids, and I'd get them every fucking day after school. And I happened to leave a package of the Watermelon Sour Patch Kids in my hoodie that I leave in my in my locker. And oh, no. I waited like a month or so, because, you know, I didn't use my locker all that after the high school. And when I took it out, the Sour Patch Kids had eaten through the entire hoodie <laughs> and the package. Whoa! Yes. I'm never eating I Sour Patch Kids then. again. That's sick. So, 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 so when I took it out of my locker, the package was open, and there was a giant hole in my hoodie with Sour Patch Kids falling out of it. Were they? Did it sense like a huge like globule, or was it just like <laughs> no, they, they, they were still all? Yeah, kids. they were still there. Like no, no, not the kids. It was the watermelon. Oh, oh yeah, okay. it was the watermelon. <laughs> So I, I, like to, I like hoodie. to imagine it better as kids that yeah. just like <laughs> fucked up everything. You yeah. forgot about us, Adam, <laughs> and we got you back. It's like the beginning of a really bad creepy <laughs> pasta. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't eat sour patch kids because I haven't since then, and I'll only eat them when other people have them, and I'll just have like one. But I can never eat a whole package knowing that they ruined a hoodie in a month. <laughs> what is what do they do to me? I never know. They can do that to fabric. What do they do to, to my soul? I mean, it's like the same thing as putting like McDonald's meal inside like a jar for a month. Uh, or does it coke? eat the jar? Oh yeah, Coke. Yeah, with Coke. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, I have an old bottle of Coke in my room. Is it gonna like yeah. wake up one night? <laughs> is it gonna <laughs> gain sentience yeah. and like just claw me across the throat in my sleep? That, was, it, that, just, rem- <laughs> that just reminded me. <laughs> Of this one episode of Goosebumps, and it, it's so, like, Goosebumps used to fuck me up when I was younger, and it's so dumb stupid now. Yeah, no. There's an episode where it's just a sponge with teeth, and it lives under the sink. <laughs> so, like, a, a steel wool. No, like a, a regular wool. sponge. <laughs> steel wool is just scary. Yeah, it is. Steel wool. It, it, yeah, it's like horrifying. Like, you can kill niggas with that shit. Yeah, you probably could. It's good for scrubbing. No, it's mo- really it's, good it's, for it's, scrubbing it's microwaves. <laughs> We're not, we're not down. It's, it's usefulness. It's just like also there's something about it. It's just like. Ugh. I think the real thing that we learned right now is that I like very unpopular things. <laughs> I mean, I like steel wool and it cleaned off melted plastic from my grandmother's microwave that one time. Love me some steel wool, you know? I'm a big fan of it. Just gotta say, it. I love, I'm also a big fan I of it. follow on Twitter. Yeah, bleach, is well. bleach is I good too. Bleach is good too. It cleans the shit out of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, we got one question from Red Bard College Grad on Twitter. Who was your favorite band in middle school, high school, and now? Middle school. 
It was this really dumb emo band called Makeshift Romeo. That's an the, awful legitimately, name. Legitimately, I'm not. I'm not Make, making this up. Makeshift Romeo. That's an awful name. <laughs> that, 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 that sounds like some bullshit we came up with. Yeah, no, it's not. All right, my, my favorite my favorite bands were System of a Down, System of a Down, Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> um, high school. I don't know what it was in high school. My chemical now, romance. Now, now. Huh? My Chemical Romance. It was not. I, I never listened to My Chemical Romance. I also didn't. I kind of like I like their first album. Oh, their second album, rather. Oh, high school, it was Coldplay. I'm going to be real. <laughs> Viva La Vida changed my life. It, did. it actually <laughs> did, though. <laughs> uh, and now, do I have a favorite band? Uh, I have a favorite. I have a favorite musician. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hold on. Let me look at my Spotify and see if I have a favorite band. Yeah. See, I read, oh Bastille. I read that question and I band? thought she meant like a band that you've liked <laughs> since like grade school, high no, school, it, it and was, now. Yeah, it no, was it was, a, it was three times. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what was your favorite band? Middle school, then high school, then. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's like the spectrum, you know. Yeah. To see who you were and then who you've become. Also, Passion Pit. Another one of my favorite bands. Very good. I went through this Chains weird moments. phase where I just I didn't listen to music for like three years. And yeah, that was my middle school. That was the that was why I could only pick out that one. Mine time. mine was in high school. Oddly enough, <coughs> like I just remember not listening to music from like tenth grade to like twelfth. I took the public bus, so. I did too, and I still didn't listen to music. I read books. A good dweeb. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good. Dweeb is, Dweeb is my favorite, like, nerd cinema. It's a really good one. <laughs> it is good. <clears throat> I think in middle school, so uh, I want to say in middle school, like, my favorite band was Aerosmith because that's what I was, like, around constantly. Like, my family mm -hmm. really, really loves Aerosmith. And that's what I was with around a lot. So I, <laughs> by association, I'd have to say that they were my favorite at that time. Yeah, okay. Um, in high school, I really, really liked Nerd. That, that was Pharrell's band. With his squad, and I still really love them. But like in high school, that's when I really started listening to them. Yeah. And now I, I I like Walk the Moon a lot. I like Fun a lot. I like Vampire Weekend a lot. Walk the Moon. Are those guys are used to do YouTube or some shit. No, I think it's something else. Think you know, okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the only memory I have of Okay Go is they made that one video that was like one one take. One take. And I just saw an expo literally an exposed video in like 2010, and it was like, here are the hidden cuts. Yeah. When is middle school? Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Okay, I always forget that because like I went to like grade school, and then my high school was seventh through twelve, and I, I just didn't go to a middle school. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm my... very confused about when. Yeah, it is. And my <laughs> middle school and my high school were the same thing. They were the same building. But and it was for some reason, in, in my city, we do one through six grade school, and then two years in middle school, we do seven days in middle school, have a whole fucking other building for it. <laughs> yeah, and the, that's what I don't understand. And then, and then we go to high school for another four years. This is this two years of weird, awful place. That is middle one middle school just sucks in general. It's like all people's like worst time in their lives, and then just, they put you in this other just awful, terrible building that no one likes just for two years. So. Okay, so I feel like in middle school it was absolutely Paramore. I, I listened to them like nonstop. I like Paramore now. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I, I also I, like Paramore well, now. I also like the new album and I really dug the vibe. It's I, so good. I, 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 I dig the vibe. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't pick too many songs that I would like add to my playlist, but I like I like the, the entire package. Yeah. Like, I sort of just like the vibe. It's a very album. cohesive album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I really liked about it. Uh, they've been a constant. I can't really like pick yeah. a picture, pick up a time where like I really liked them more than ever because I just yeah I'm new to that. I've, I've always just been Absolutely. a big fan of just female vocals and rock songs and metal. Like for some reason, I'm just like I'm very. I just love. I don't. I don't know. There's probably a word for it. I guess I'm a contrarian almost. I like whatever is the least popular stylistically. So whenever it's like a primarily male generated. Uh, like male dominated genre in terms of like vocals I prefer when females do it that's why I really like females and rock and like metal and stuff like that yeah. and whenever it's the other way around I really enjoy like male pop singers and stuff like that it's just I don't know that's just always how I've been so Paramount when I first heard them I was like mm, misery was it misery business yeah that's mm -hmm. my fucking jam 
like it's a very even split between Paramore and Evanescence in my in my middle school ages. I still, I still, I brought, I brought this on the podcast once, but when I first heard, not, it was maybe in the second or third time I listened to Bring Me to Life, I had this thought: this is the greatest song ever written. It is it is? I know, I know what that's, I know, <laughs> but there was a time where I was like, this is so amazing. I love everything about this. It sounds so cool. I remember another one from middle school, and it was Within Temptation. Another, they were like super heavy rock with the super high female vocals. That's what, that's what made me think of it. Yeah. I feel like in high school, it was like, I definitely got into heavier music then. It was like a lot of System of Down, a lot of Disturbed. Yeah. And Avenged Sevenfold, that was absolutely was in high school. Too, I, I really, I really enjoy me. like one or two of their songs. Yeah. And the rest of them, I'm just like, oh man. I think seventh grade was when I broke up with Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That early? Yeah, that early. That was like, I think that was. Oh was yeah, like, I always forget like our time ones are slightly off. So I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. Then yeah. When you stop, I was like, no, it's probably, I probably did around the same yeah. time. Because like, I remember high school was when I got way more into anime, and so I watched a lot of AMVs, and that led to like the weird heavy music taste. So like, there was yeah, a lot of Lincoln like, Benjamin and the, a lot watched... of Avenged Sevenfold. <laughs> the the Lincoln Park Avenged yeah. Sevenfold AMVs. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. <sighs> and then now it's just like indie stuff. I like pop. I like. A lot of music. I basically just like put whatever is suggested on Spotify, and I'm like, "Well, just listen to that." Yeah, I just listen to jazz, funk, and then jazzy funk. I started listening to soft jazz over the weekend, and it makes me so productive. Jazz is like the like, <clears throat> fucking soft jazz is just like the work of music. Yeah, that, that was shit, that shit got me through fucking high school back when I was a little shit. Um, Colin asks on Facebook if the life cast were a fighting game, which martial art fighting style would each member of the life cast family have? Okay. We're just okay. gonna do. We're just gonna do us four. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. Okay. Flail and cry. A hundred percent. Chris <laughs> is Jeet Kune Do. <laughs> also, uh, Bruce Lee's fighting style. Every game has the Bruce Lee character. Every fighting game has a Bruce Lee character, and Chris would a thousand percent be our Bruce Lee character. <laughs> I could see him like sort of like he's a combination of Bruce Lee and sort of like black exploitation type thing. Cause he's got he's got the afro. I could see him with like a headband, shirtless with like green pants. <laughs> oh, he's so good. Oh my god, I would a thousand percent be Judo. Just like sort of low stance, sort of like ready to grapple. I think Copiera. It's a, it's a Brazilian martial art. The, yeah, capoeira. capoeira. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know styles. So 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 what would be like the most passive fighting style? Cheering. Krav Cheer. Maga. All right, cool. Is is more about disarming than harming. Okay, I'd do that then. Oh yeah. Oh. Let's, what would Tiffany be? Tiffany would be. She she would be the she would be the asshole with the sword. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you in this martial arts based fighting game? You're Yoshimitsu. Tiffany brought a sword to a yeah, fist fight. Should, you wouldn't use it, but you just have it. Yeah, yeah, just, just, like, like, yeah it's a fashion you use piece. Strike. Or you just to ride away. Yeah. You're gonna ride a sword away? Yeah. That sounds. You like the pony stick thing? Oh okay. What? What's it called? The, the you know, like you ride the stick and has a pony head. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. hobby horses. Yeah. Yeah. That thing. Um, the Sydney, you put a lot in here. I know. I'm only gonna pick a few. <laughs> That's fine. We have Is a that question okay? From chat, if we want to do. Oh that. yeah, let's do a question from chat. We jump into that. It's from a user by the name of six 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 Julia. Hi from Russia. Do you know any Russian words? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I used to know uh, an entire poem about Pooh and Piglet. No. And it, it translates to, uh, where are we going with the piglet? It's a very big secret. And I only know the last part, it's Baltroy, Baltroy secret. Besides uh, <laughs> racist Counter-Strike things, I know absolutely yeah. nothing. <laughs> I probably bo botched that pronunciation a lot, by well, the way. Russian's very, like... I feel like it's like the most like if you can't speak Russian, you sound the weirdest. Yeah, speaking yeah, your language. absolutely. I like, got like by far. I feel like broken Russian. Like I, I bet if, if you were Russian, like listening to people speak Russian badly might be like the funniest thing. <laughs> There's just something about the way they say it that like seems difficult. It's also just like 
one of my mom's like workers went to Russia for a few weeks and she's like it's very isolating because like nothing has a root word like you can kind of piece together what things will say in like Spanish or French or whatever just because like normal English words like there's nothing that looks the same yeah. yeah like I wonder what pharmacia means I bet it means pharmacy <laughs> yeah I lied. I know what Zarya says, which she does her ultimate. <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't know it, but I don't know if I want to try to say it. Okay. But I know that. I know. <laughs> that's, that's worse than the Zarya thing. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. I, I know Ruski. <laughs> yeah, that's just Russian for Russian. <laughs> it probably translates to. Uh, um, what the fuck does Arya say when it's Grab in English? No. <laughs> no. Hold up. Fire at will. Yeah. She says fire at will in English, so. The, the, the like, yeah. That's probably what it means. I'm not going to Hold on, I'm, I'm fact checking you on that. <laughs> I, 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 I assume. Right what do, <laughs> what, do, <laughs> <laughs> what did you type? <laughs> I typed into Google, what does Arya say in Russian? And it. It detected a Google Translate. What does Zarya? <laughs> in Russian. Что Zarya? Oh, wow. You know, oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Armenian and Russian have very similar vocal palettes. Cool. Um, fire at will. Yeah. Hey. Hey. And it's um, Ogon Potogovnosti. Yes. That's what Tobolsti. <laughs> Total Steve. <laughs> See, every time I hear it, I just think it says, like, I'm getting some oval teen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some oval <laughs> So, now that we've butchered your language, what's next? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry this about come, that. All of these next ones come from Sydney, uh, from Facebook. Right. Uh, best new Overwatch skin or top three? Tracer's graffiti skin, Symmetra's uh, new skin, and... Yeah. yeah. It's fucking oh. yeah, Diva. Yeah. Also, Anna's dance emote it's, is the best. I don't know what's in reference to, but I love it. It's a traditional dance. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, it, uh, it depends which day you ask me. Because some days I'll be like, yeah, that Genji one's incredible. And others will be like, you know what? It's actually not that great. But like the one, the constant ones, it's it's Diva. It's May. And um, May's Beekeeper one. May's Beekeeper one is like the most precious thing I've ever fucking seen in my goddamn life. <laughs> and it's um, <clears throat> it's based out. Tracers? Tracer. Yeah. I yeah. fucking love Tracer. I can't Tracers. believe Tracer was Banksy. Yeah. <laughs> I love Tracer so much. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like it. It's not, it, it doesn't like, it, it, it's weird because it's like, I like love everything about it, but like my heart doesn't. Like my brain <laughs> is like, this is really cool. I love the style of the design of it. But like every time when I see it, my heart doesn't leap out of, out of my chest. <laughs> yeah. Mine does for Beekeeper May. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll load up Overwatch later tonight, as much as it pains me, and I'll look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Sydney, do you have opinions on this? I, I really, Since you asked. <laughs> I really love Divas. It's just it's such a cool style. Yeah, I think great. it's really funny that it doesn't match with her dance that she got at all. No. no. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I like Sombra's dance also, because she's a legend at Braves. I love Sombra's dance <laughs> yeah, so much. Sombra's dance is so cool. It's so cute. <laughs> and um, I also really like Tracers. I'm probably going to wind up buying that one if I don't get it. Ron and like, best dance, though. Oh. No. What? Are you going to sit at a table and tell me <laughs> that Reinhardt's dance is better than Zarya's dance? Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I am too. It, it, Zarya, it, it, it's Zarya impossible is not for becoming... Zarya to capture the the sort of But do you power. have do you have her weightlifter outfit? Yeah, I have. I think I have a bad one. Okay, but do you use? Have you seen them together? <laughs> yeah, I've seen you do them together. Yeah, <laughs> I love this video. <laughs> I know. I I I don't like Zarya's dance because she's slowly becoming this like just kind of butt end of the joke character. That's fair. She is like, like still that's a the entire cast. Yeah. So like Overwatch started off a little bit. It was like, oh cool, seventy six is like this sort of like weird like wizened old warrior who's trying to recapture his youth. You can sort of tell he's got the balding hairline and he's got like the fact he's wearing like a jacket he probably got in the eighties or something. Yeah. Like like the, his character. Nineteen seventies. His char- his character design like screams like character and now he's like oh my dad and his dance is like fucking just <laughs> his dance is him for 
forgetting how to dance. It's so bad. <laughs> but like in the in the most perfect way. And it's just I, like he's just becoming bad. Reaper is becoming. Yeah, he was always an edge lord, but now he's like a fucking edge lord. He's a fucking edge lord. Also, uh, per, like pre dead, <laughs> he was chill. Yeah, yeah they, they, all of the characters lean into them. They're the, leaning into the, the jokes like yeah, yeah. a lot, <laughs> real hard. Yeah. Um, on the note of Reaper, uh, not Reapers, Soldiers seventy six's dance. <laughs> I saw a comparison video from where they got like the source dance, and it was just some dude from a western like laughing his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like not even dancing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like, oh. uh, all right. Uh, next question is also from Sydney. You don't have to keep saying that. Okay. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> um. I don't know what to what of these to pick. This is probably gonna be the last one. Uh. Yeah. What's a game series that would translate well to VR? Not like how it is now, but full blown VR, like SA, like Sal, sort of online or some shit. I had my answer in mind when I wrote that one. And Cooking Mama. <laughs> I would love a VR Cooking Mama game. I don't know if I would. I feel like we've answered this question before. We might have. Just I think the previous one it was just um, what do you want to see in VR, mm -hmm. and this one is more like full blown immersive. Immersion VR. I mean, if it's like sound quality, then the you don't the, die. And the best choice is fucking. Oh yeah, not, not that. Yeah. The, the, be, the best choice is, is a game that would fucking just like overload your audio sensory, and that would be fucking Bloodborne. Oh <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, playing playing oh, as God. the hunter and having to like get into high high action speed battles with the most horrifying creatures. Some of the most horrifying creatures ever put just exist. Forth. Just put forth. That that'd be too much. It pro that's probably a bad choice because you wouldn't be able to handle it. It'd be way, it'd be way too much just like yeah. shit happening. I feel like you'd way get too much scraping on the ground. No, yeah, you it's would like it's have not even just like the scraping and then moving around. It's like them existing. <laughs> yeah, like just, they have a lot of moving parts. Yeah, yeah, I've heard like for example in like VR, like one of the things that like, trip people the fuck out is scale. So it's like yeah. one of the people yeah. people have had like panic attacks because they saw like the whale in like the fucking um and like the blue sonic adventure in apps <laughs> no there's like this like a uh, aquarium like app oh. that comes with like a lot okay. of vr headsets thing and there's yeah. this, this one where you're like in the water and you see a whale and people freak the fuck out so imagine fighting some of the very large I'd bosses and blood like blood. even the human bosses yeah. are taller than you by yeah. a couple of feet yeah <laughs> that, that's sort of that's like very like a soulsian sort of design yeah there. I experienced that immersion thing at PAX. I don't remember what game it was, but I remember I had the headset on and everything, and it was like, I completely lost track of time to the point where, like, I needed to physically adjust myself to make sure that I was still there. And I, like, I got up and, like, ran away very quickly, because I was like, okay, we we need to get grounded back in reality real quick. Start to punch yourself in the face. <laughs> I'm alive! Still alive! We're still here! Um... I want to say like Shadow of the Colossus, because I feel like the scale would trip people that out. That is the actual best choice <laughs> because one, it's one, it still has that grand sense of like scale and stuff. Yeah. But one, it seems like it might actually be doable. So yeah. Having you able yeah. to climb a giant colossus, and holy sh! Oh my goodness, that is. Like, shit. keep in mind, I've never played Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, but you don't even. Like I, I don't know how good that would be. I just think that, conceptually it would be very cool. That'd be that's like that's like the best choice. She wins. You win. <laughs> you, win you win the question. Because like you said the, the scale thing, and I was like, well, okay. I was thinking Warframe, yeah. just because like flying around in a the exoskeleton would be super fucking cool. Yeah. But then like climbing, like you being the small person, yeah. and like just climbing shit. Yeah. And especially and, if it's like immersive. Yeah. And you can't die. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna die in real life. You gotta get you back for real. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I, I wonder what it would be like. I haven't played any like VR games like that that much. But like, say if you were like, you were like in your immersive VR thing, like you have like the gear on and you just kind of your body shuts off, like you would die in the game. <laughs> Does your mind think you die? <laughs> like, like if you die oh. in the game, would you die for real? Like, your, think... like your mind is like this. This is because like for for like for example, when we're just doing the visual headset, your mind quickly adjusts. It's like yeah, this is reality now. Obviously, yeah, we, we've all done VR, right? Like yeah. you put the headset on, your mind is like yeah, this is new life. 
This is how life is now. I have the perfect, like, comparison to that, and yeah. I don't know who's experienced it, but uh, it's very much like going into the dark room for photojournalism yeah. when all of a sudden you just can't fucking see. Yeah, because does. the screen goes black and your eyes don't see anything else except black. There's no color. It's, f- it's just dark. I feel like it would be like a fainting sensation yeah. instead of actually dying. Yeah. It just, just like, you, 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 you fall off the Colossus and die, and then you just pass out. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. um, oh, especially if you fall down. Like, falling you fall, yeah, you me you fall like looking, looking down, oh. you might actually have a heart attack. God. Oh, that's awful. I like. I have flashbacks from the things that make me less anxious. <laughs> and we'll just stick. We'll just stick to fucking Cooking Mama. Yes, <laughs> no, sorry, I, I retract your point. <laughs> I don't. I still want Shadow of the Colossus. No, I definitely do too. But I'm probably gonna die. Well, what a way to go. <laughs> I feel like if when we get to that point, because it's gonna be a win. Let's all be completely honest with ourselves. Yeah. Um, there'd be some sort of failsafe to like make sure your brain doesn't freak the fuck out. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's like a short shock to like a calf. It's like, hey, hey. Yeah, or, you're human still. Or, or, or it'll just be like, the game does the math. Like, if you hit the ground, if that's how you would have died, and they just don't let you fall, it's gonna freeze, and it's just like, you lost. Yeah. Or, like, we're not gonna have you fall. Or something. Yeah. 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 Instead of just having you I hate, fucking I hate, collide into the ground. I hate that games that awful. like. Yeah, oh my no, God. I don't wanna see that. You know, what the hell? Yeah. I hate games that you like fall off of things backwards and then you hit the ground and then it fades to black. <laughs> you get to just see your body right like, yeah. yeah. Right no, like a first person. Oh. I think Dishonored does it? Yeah, Dis- oh, Dishonored yeah, yeah. does the tumble and it, it's really annoying. Yeah. All right, I think that is going to do it for us. Oh, Thank you for, cool. yeah, it's been an hour and several minutes. Um, thank you for sticking with us. This is a fun <laughs> time. Um, Thank you for sticking around live. If you yeah. did that, this podcast will be up. Oh, uh, we got one. We oh, got one last question. We're doing our E three predictions next week, mm-hmm. uh, when it's a little bit closer to to E three time. Yeah. Uh, Mirage Leonardo. Uh, thank you for your question, though. Um, so yeah, we'll be back next Monday. We're doing it Monday yeah. again. This was a little bit of an anomaly. Um, but yeah, thank you for sticking around, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.